Hey hey, welcome to part 2. In this video, I'm going to show you how I created this 3D scene with textures painted in Procreate. If you want to know how I modeled the objects, then make sure to check out part 1. I will texture all of the 3D models in Procreate, then bring them back into Nomad Sculpt. And lastly, I will make a render in Nomad and in Blender. Painting in Procreate can be a little bit intimidating sometimes, but we're going to start with the blueberry, which is really easy. We're going to click on this button here, which opens the layer panel, and then you see this base layer. We're not going to touch it. I always keep the base layer the way it is, and then I add to that. So I'm going to add a layer by clicking the plus. Then we're going to click on this 3D cube, and then you can see that there's three different layers below that. And whenever you're going to color it on the object, you have to make sure that you click the color before you start coloring. So I'm going to choose blue. I already put all the colors that I want to use here. I'm going to go for a blue color that is slightly purple. What we're going to do is on that layer where we selected the color, we're going to drag this to the object and then everything is blue. Then we're going to add another layer. We're going to do the same. Select the color layer and then I put a few purple colors here. I'm going to select them. With the round brush in painting, we're just going to scribble on it. Don't think about it too much. Just put the colors. The blueberry is usually not really one color. It's a combination of a few color and it's also slightly dusty, which makes it seem like it has more colors. So just scribble some purples and make sure to rotate around the entire object so that you don't miss any spots. that there's a bunch of scribbles i'm going to blend all of them out with this blend button and you can also choose a brush to blend and i would recommend choosing a brush that has a little bit of texture these are some of the custom brushes that i have but procreate also has some default brushes that also have textures for example here and calligraphy section there's also a few brushes with texture and then just blend all of the colors out. And there's only one more thing to add and this is the kind of like glossy or roughness of the texture and a blueberry isn't necessarily very glossy it's more rough than it's glossy if we go to the color wheel we double tap the darkest area color will naturally snap to a black color and if you double tap on the white area the color will snap to a white color and if you choose the black color on the roughness layer and we drag it get a super glossy object but we don't want that we want something in between light gray now there's a little bit of gloss but more roughness than gloss and that's already it next object the strawberry there's a lot more objects in the scene and if you open the layer panel you can see that each object is on its own layer this is really helpful when coloring so that you don't accidentally color on something else we're going to start with the easiest which is the seeds because the seeds only have one color and they're slightly glossy so we're just going to search for until we find the seed so these are the first seeds in the layer add a new layer make sure to select the color and then drag the color and do that for the other seeds as well For the strawberry base, we're going to do the exact same as the blueberry. I've chosen a few pink and reddish colors and we're just going to scribble those on the objects and then afterwards we're going to blend those out.
I forgot to add a base color layer. So let's add that before we start blending. Otherwise you can see below the blend that the object is actually white and not the base color. Drag in the base color and then blend. top of the strawberry is usually like a greenish yellow sometimes a white color add another layer and make sure that you're coloring on the color layer so i'm going to make it green and then blend the edges a bit it's hard to see so i'm going to hide the leaves for a moment Also going to paint the inside because the inside looks different than the outside i'm going to explain it but if you get confused make sure to look up some references that usually really helps i'm going to choose a light pink color create a new layer i'm going to draw a line and then create like an oval on both sides I'm going to blend the edges a little bit, not too much. So you'll have to see that it's sharp. I'm going to choose a pink color that is slightly darker, make the brush smaller and add another layer. I know it's another layers, but that's in my opinion, the best way, the easiest way. I'm also going to choose a different brush in the inking section, select the syrup brush this brush gets thicker as you draw a line and that's what we want we're gonna do it in the opposite direction it doesn't have to be perfect because the strawberry is also not perfect i'm gonna blend it out just a little bit And then we're going to go to the other side and repeat the same steps. We're going to blend out the middle with the same type of curve that the lines have. So go to that layer of the middle part and blend out towards those lines. The blueberry was semi-glossy. Starberries are usually more glossy. So we're going to make it a dark gray. And as you can see on the last layer, I actually forgot to select the color. And you can see that on the roughness and on the metallic, I'm going to clear both of these. Just tap once and then clear. Now everything is dark gray. I repeat for each layer. Now you can see it has a little bit of a gloss, but not too much. We're gonna move on to this strawberry. Create a new layer, select the color, and bring in the base color. Another layer. Select the color and scribble shades of pink on the object.
time for the inside. Again, if you get confused, look up a reference. Make sure to select the color layer. We're going to choose one of the lightest pink colors. And we're going to draw an oval. And make the top a little bit more boxy. And we're going to choose a slightly darker pink color. And we're going to kind of make like a heart. Then the lines, add another layer, select the color and use a light pink color that you haven't used yet for the lines. Then we're going to do the last blending for this strawberry. We're going to select the middle part, make sure to be on the color layer, and we're going to blend in those curves. Then we're done with the painting, and I'm going to select a dark gray color for the roughness and add that in each layer. For the full strawberry, we're going to do the exact same. So I'm going to speed through this. Place a base color, scribble your pink shades on the strawberry, and then blend. And make sure to add a dark gray color to the roughness on each layer. I also wanted to say that if your strawberries don't look good, or in your opinion, they're not good enough, just erase everything, do it again, it will get better. <laughs> I think by now this is probably the fourth time that I'm painting these strawberries so it's totally okay if the first time they come out horrible just patience is very important the strawberries are done now we're gonna do the leaves it's the same method for the base so base color, then add the scribbles, and then I'm going to show you where to put the accents. First, base color and scribbles. Or actually first, maybe bring all the leaves back. I've hidden all of them. Let's bring all the leaves back.
So these are all the leaves. You can see a few white ones. I think the UVs probably didn't copy correctly. Or maybe I accidentally deleted the UVs before transferring everything to Procreate. But it's not a big problem. I will fix it when we get back into Nomad. And for the extra detail of the leaves, I personally think they look better if the middle of the leaves is a little bit emphasized. This can be done by adding a light color or a darker color, then blending it out. And then the middle just stands out a little bit more. I think it's important to choose bright colors. These strawberries look beautiful. So we're going to move on to the bread now. So I want the bread to look toasty, kind of something between a french toast and a grilled cheese. It took me a while to figure out how exactly to do this, but I've actually found a quite easy way. First I'm going to choose a different color. I'm going to go for a dark color. This is not going to be the final bread color, but it will help us to create the first layer. So we're going to choose a very dark color and then in the brush settings, in the industrial section, you can find this brush, Rust the Decay, I'm going to use that one and you can try it out, it has like this rusty texture. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger and like that, we're just going to draw a straight line to the top, something like this. You can see that some spots are a little bit darker, that's exactly what we want, make the brush a little bit smaller, create a few more dark spots. Now here, we're going to create a new layer, select the color layer, and then choose a bright color, so she can color on the darker color that we just created. I'm going to choose an inking brush, this one, the syrup, and I'm going to create outlines. So for example, we have a dark spot here, at the edge of the dark spot, I'm going to create a line. I'm going to color in all of the shapes. If the shape is fully closed, you can drag in the color. If it's not, you have to fill it manually. Like this one.
I'm going to adjust the shapes a little bit by tapping on this arrow. You can see all the shapes have gotten a white outline. You can move them by pinching them. So I want to adjust the shapes a little bit. So I'm going to duplicate the layer, swipe it to the left and then click duplicate. I'm going to hide the previous layer so that we can see what we are erasing. Select the color layer and the eraser. I'm going to erase all of this. I'm going to turn the other layer back on. I'm going to give it a different color just so that we know what we are moving. Then with the last layer selected, I'm going to click this arrow and then you can move it by pinching it. I want it to be a bigger shape that's more connected. I'm going to move it here and I'm going to go back to the original layer, duplicate it, just so that we have a reference for later in case we mess anything up. Make sure to hide the layer that we just duplicated and then we're going to go to this layer and we're going to select the color. Then we're just going to erase the parts that, that are overlapping too much. Then I'm going to merge the orange and the green by pinching the layers together. Like that. Then the last thing that we are going to do, we're going to choose the eraser, make it smaller, and we're going to create holes in the shapes. The more random the shapes, the more natural it will look. So that's why I recommend making as much scribbles as possible. I think this should be enough. I know it looks very weird, but we're going to fix all of that now. I'm going to hide all of the layers we just created. And then on top of our reference layer, I'm going to create another layer. Select the color. I'm going to choose a base color for the entire bird, which will be a light yellow color. I'm going to drag it, make sure that everything is colored. Then we're going to create another layer. I'm going to choose a dark brown color for the outside of the bird. Make sure that you're on the color layer and then we're just going to color the edges. It doesn't have to be perfect, don't worry if you mess it up. And if you swipe, Procreate will snap it into place. This looks good for now. I'm going to bring back the weird colors. And then we're going to alpha lock the layer with the weird colors by holding two fingers and swiping to the right. With this function, you can recolor the entire layer. So for the scribbles, I'm going to choose a dark color that is very saturated. And this is going to be the roast of the bird. Make sure that we're on the color layer. Make the bird as big as possible. And then just recolor it. Now in between the base color and the scribbles, I'm going to create another layer. And I'm going to choose a darker yellow. And I'm going to create bigger scribbles around the other scribbles. I'm going to blend the edges a little bit so that you can still see the shape, but it looks softer. We 
Right now it looks very flat. If you look at the side, the rose ends at that line. I'm going to make some drips on this side so that the rose kind of goes over under the alpha lock by holding two fingers and swiping to the right and then create drips on the side. And if you think of French toast, there's egg and milk on top of the bread before you fry it. And when you fry it, you get these little swirls on the side. So that's what we're going to create. Now I'm going to create even more texture by giving it a gradient effect and also adding another texture brush. So we're going to make sure that the layer is alpha locked by swiping with two fingers to the right. Then I'm going to select this very bright orange color. Just color some parts very bright and leave others like this. And don't forget about the edges that we just did. And we're going to blend it out to create that gradient effect. I'm going to choose an even darker color to make more contrast in the gradient. Brownish red dark color and then blend it out. Lastly, I'm going to choose a very bright yellow color. And I'm going to select one of the texture brushes. I'm going to choose a brush from the vintage selection. It's at the bottom here. And I'm going to choose the one that has little dots in it. As you can see, there's little dots in it. I'm going to add another layer. Tap on it once. We're going to make it a clipping mask layer. Then we're going to make the brush very big. And we're just going to add some texture here and there. And choose the darkest color. This one is a dark magenta color. So add that almost burnt touch to the toast. Now this side of the toast is done. And luckily in Procreate you can duplicate layers. So we don't have to do everything again. I'm going to select all of the layers on top of the base layer, these three. Now I have to do the other side. One way you can do it is to duplicate everything we did on this side, or you could just paint it again. We're going to duplicate all of the layers on top of the base layer. Swipe to the left and click duplicate. Do that for all of the three layers. Then move them into place. Then select the three layers that you want on the other side. We're going to click on this arrow. If you click on the advanced button, you'll get a few options. You can scale it and move it. I want to snap it on one of the sides. So I'm going to drag it slowly and then just let go. Then we want to move this diamond in the middle. I'm going to move that to the other side. It's a little bent, but that's okay. Then we're going to click on this projection button. I'm going to turn the bi-directional on. Now it's on the other side. It's a little bit crooked. The lines are not really nice. But we can fix that by tapping on it once. And then you get this attach button. Click attach. And it's a little bit better. Still not perfect, but better. We're going to go to the top view and then move it into place. Then what I would do is erase of these lines on the sides and then manually correct some of the swirls.
now all of the coloring of the bread is done. All of the objects have been painted, so we're going to bring them back to Nomad. We're going to start with the blueberry. You have to click on this wrench here, and then on the share button, and then we are going to choose OBJ as the file type. And here you can choose where you want to, to share it to. If you scroll all the way through it, Nomad Sculpt is probably not in between those apps. So you can click on the more button and then find Nomad Sculpt in the list. And then if you still have the Nomad Sculpt scene open, it will give you this option and we will just click add to scene. Then the colored blueberry will appear in the exact spot as the previous blueberry was. If you don't see any color, go to the sunlight here and make sure that you have the lid option selected. We're going to go to the layer panel. You can see this is the new blueberry. And this is the old blueberry. So I'm going to turn that one off. And you can see the new one is called blueberry blueberry. I'm just going to keep that, but you can also rename them. Next, I'm going to import the bread. The strawberry is the hardest because there's multiple objects. So I'm going to do that one last. And a strawberry. Now if you open the layer panel, you can see what I mean. There's a lot of objects and they're not organized. So you have to organize them again. I'm going to start with the smallest one, which is this one. I'm going to move it up. And then I'm going to select the objects below it until I find an object that belongs to the smallest one. This one belongs to the biggest one, but this one belongs to the smallest one. So I'm going to drag it up until you get this yellow line and then let go. And then continue to search for the objects that belong to this one. And then repeat the same steps for the other two pieces. I'm going to hide the original strawberries. So you can get a better view of the new ones. Now these two leaves don't have any colors because something went wrong with the UV mapping and importing Impropriate. But it shouldn't be a problem. I'm going to delete them and then copy a few of the ones that are colored to there. This one looks pretty similar. I'm just going to clone it, drag it so that it sits separate, so not in any of the groups. And then I'm going to move it into place. Now let's add a few lights so that it starts looking less sad and dark. I'm going to want to click on this sun icon here. And then there's this section, lights. Just click add light. I'm going to snap to the front view. Click the gizmo tool and move the light up. I'm going to increase the intensity a little bit by dragging. Then I'm going to add one more light. And this one I'm going to place behind the bird. going to turn it a little bit. Actually, let's put it in front. For the composition, I want to stack two of the breads together and then put the toppings on the top and some of them on the side together with the whipped cream. I'm going to duplicate the bread and go to the gizmo tool and drag it up. I'm also going to turn it so that each bread has a different pattern on the top. Then it's time to place the blueberries and the strawberries on top just by rotating them and making sure that they touch the bread. And also when you move the strawberries around, make sure that you have the entire strawberry selected. Otherwise, yeah you'll move one part and the rest you can do this by making sure that the boxes are checked
The last object of the French toast is the caramel. I'm going to use the tube tool for this. In the right side bar, you can scroll down. Then I'm going to choose the path option here. And before making any shapes, I'm going to make sure that I'm on the top view so that the caramel swirl is exactly on the bird. And also enable the snap. This will snap the tool on the bird. Then tap and drag to create a line. Add more points by dragging to create a corner you can add three points like this in the shape of a triangle keep creating the swirl by dragging the points and then when you're happy with your shape click this green button if you rotate around the object, the tube should be laying on the bird. There's a few inconsistencies, but these are easy to fix. Right now the tube is also going through the toppings, and I want the caramel to be on top of the toppings, not through them, and also less thick. So with this orange top, you can change the radius by dragging it, I'm just going to make it smaller. And there's also this radius button on the top, which determines the level of radius detail in the tube. We're going to use that later, but first I'm going to drag the tube on top of the toppings. This first point is easy, I'm just going to drag it down. I want the caramel to go on top of this blueberry, so I'm going to tap to create a point. Then create two more dots on the sides. Then drag the middle point up. And add more points if it's difficult. Something like this. It's really thick, but I'm going to adjust that later. Next, this corner, it's in the bread, so I'm going to move it up. Then I want to create a drip, so I'm going to move this point out, then up, and I'm going to place two points on the edge of the drip, and then move this down. This process can get very confusing as you keep adding more points. So make sure to not put unnecessary points and don't get overwhelmed. Just take it point by point. And if you accidentally create a black dot, that means that the point is going to be very sharp. You can just tap it once and then it will be become a soft curve again. Now that the caramel is on top of the toppings, I'm going to create some randomness in the radius of the shape. To do this, you want to go to the level 3 of the radius, so just tap the radius button twice. Then you can see every white point so it has an orange point now, and by dragging that point, you can change the radius. Another tip is to search for the adjacent lines, for example, this point. If you look at where the line starts, there's a line here, and if you follow that line, you get the dot. Now my caramel shape is done. Some areas are really thin and the others are really thicker. I'm going to click on the validate button and then I'm going to create a material for the shape. Because the caramel is just a solid color, I'm just going to use vertex paint, like the whipped creams. Those are also just a white color, so there's no need to paint on them. I'm going to make sure that I have the swirls selected. 
by tapping on it. Then going to the left bottom corner, the sphere that has a color, just click on that and select an orange color. If you drag to change the color, you can actually see a little preview. And I want it to be orange golden. Then close these settings by tapping on the screen. Then click force paint all and tap to close this selection. Then in the top left corner, I'm going to select this button. Here you can see the materials of the object. I'm going to click on refraction. This will create a clear and transparent material. And I'm going to drag the reflectance out. This changes the glossiness, so the more the glossier. I'm going to render my final image in Blender. The render engines in Blender are just great. There are so many more options, so if you can use Blender, I would recommend that. But I will also show you how you would render this in Nomad Sculpt. We already put lights. I might adjust them a little bit, but before doing that, I'm going to place a plane in the environment then more shadows will be created and more light bounces will happen. I'm going to go to the layer panel and then click add and click plane. Very small right now, but I'm just going to make it bigger. And then drag it down below so that all of the items are on top of it. And you can see there are more shadows here, which is what we want. I'm going to give it a color so that it's less bright and doesn't stand out as much. I'm going to make the plane very big so that when you render it, you can't see that it stops. You can't see the edges. And I'm going to adjust the light so that the bread looks less dark. Go to the layer panel and then find the lights. Then to render and get a final image, rotate around the object until you find the angle and the picture that you would like. Then click on the file button, scroll down until you see the render options. You can change the dimensions of the picture, but I'm just going to keep it to screen and then click the export PNG button. And then you get the picture and then you can click on this button here to save it to your camera roll or somewhere else. Like I said, I will be rendering this in Blender. I won't show the exact process. But if you like to see that, please make sure to comment. Maybe I'll make a future video about it. And now I will show you a few of my final renders. This is the end of the tutorial and I hope you liked it. I hope you learned something.